In this video, I'm going to talk about capacitive coupling between two circuits. Here I've drawn two wires, wire 1 and wire 2, and I'm going to cover the capacitive coupling that can happen between these two wires, and this will develop a lot of intuition for, in general for capacitive coupling in circuits. Wire 1 is biased with a voltage source, V1, here. It's an AC voltage source. There's a capacitance between wire 1 and ground, C sub 1G, there's a capacitance, a coupling capacitance, between wire 1 and wire 2, C sub 1, 2, here. And there is finally a capacitance between wire 2 and ground, C sub 2G. And there's a, also a resistance between wire 2 and ground. This is a little more physical representation of, of what we're dealing with. Now let me redraw it as a circuit representation, a, a more uh, circuit-oriented representation. Redraw it over here. So we have V1, which shows up here, C1, which is here, C12, the coupling capacitance, which is here, C2G, which is here, and then there's the resistor. If we were to uh, derive what would be the noise voltage in, at point 2, uh, which is caused by uh, fluctuations at point 1, it would be this expression here, the noise voltage, V sub n, and by that I mean this voltage here, V sub n or over here, V sub n. If you look at it as an impedance uh, network, uh, this equation is what will describe the impedance at uh, terminal 2, uh, which I've labeled Vn. We know that the impedance of a capacitor, Z equals 1 over J omega C, and I've just substituted uh, the impedance for th this capacitance and this capacitance. Notice when I write this expression, this, this capacitor here really doesn't play a part, and that's to be expected because whatever voltage is seen here is going to be seen here at terminal 1, and so this capacitance is basically uh, not needed for the analysis of this circuit. We can simplify this expression by assuming that the resistance, this R, is going to be much, much less than the impedance of this node here, and that's going to generally be true. R is going to be on the order of 50 ohms, or a few kilo ohms, or a few mega ohms, and this is generally going to be larger. If you assume that, this resistance dominates this parallel network here, and we can rewrite the expression as V1 over Z sub 1, 2 over R plus 1, and we can simplify that further by assuming that the this this quantity here is going to be much greater than this quantity here, 1, which is probably going to be true. And if we do that, we can that 1 drops out, and we can rearrange the equation so that the noise voltage is going to be V1 times R over Z sub 1, 2. Let me scroll down. Now we know that the impedance of a capacitor is going to be 1 over J omega C, and so Z sub 1, 2 is going to be equal to 1 over j omega c sub 1, 2, and finally we have the expression that we're interested in. The noise voltage is going to be equal to j omega c sub 1, 2 times r times v1. And of course we want the noise voltage to be as low as we can, so we want to decrease all the terms that are in this equation, uh, omega c sub 1, 2, r and v1. But in practice, we really can't do much about omega because that's from the source circuit. We don't control it. And likewise, we can't do much about V1 because that's also from the source circuit. What we can do to decrease the capacitive coupling between the two circuits is decrease C sub 1, 2, the coupling capacitance, or R, the resistance between R circuit and ground. In practice, uh, this is going to be more or less fixed. You have some control over it, but this is going to be the term you'll want to focus on, C sub 1, 2. What can we do to decrease C sub 1, 2? Let me scroll down. It's too far. Uh, for C sub 1, 2, it, we know that capacitance for a parallel plate capacitor is the dielectric constant times area over D. And so something we can do is decrease the area term between two circuits. And this is where you'll find uh, in printed circuit boards where you'll route things at 90 degrees to each other on different layers. So one layer may be oriented this way and the other layer, the, the, the next signal layer may be oriented this way. And so only a very small area between the two uh, can be used for capacitive coupling. And that's one of the major mitigation techniques you'll use.
Another thing you can do is just physically separate your two circuits, and that would be equivalent to increasing the distance between them, um, and that will lower the capacitance and lower this noise voltage expression. Another, the final thing you can do is put a shield uh, between them so that there there is no uh, capacitive coupling, but you have to be careful about how you do that. And I'm going to scroll down and show you why. Here I've redrawn the circuit. The only difference is on circuit 2, there's a shield around it. And in this case, I haven't grounded the shield. I'm just letting the shield float. Uh, let me walk through this briefly. We have the uh, same capacitance C sub 1, 2. Now, between circuit 1 and circuit 2, we have the C sub 1s capacitance. This is between the uh, uh, circuit 1 and the shield of circuit 2. There is a sh uh, capacitance between the shield of circuit 2 and ground, C sub SG. And finally, there's this capacitance. This is, this is a new one. This is the capacitance between wire 2 and the shield, C sub 2S. So let's redraw it over here. And C sub 1G shows up here. C sub 1S is here. C sub uh, 2S is here. And C sub SG is here. Now notice in this circuit that uh, the uh, terminal S and terminal 2 are connected by this capacitor. And there's no DC connection. Well, I forgot the resistor. There is a DC connection to ground. There's the resistor, R. But let's say R is fairly large, on the order of a kilo ohm or more. That means that only a certain amount of current is going to be able to, to go through R, and there will be some, some voltage associated with that. In general, the terminal S and terminal 2 are going to track each other, so they're, they're going to try to, to get, get to the same potential. So they'll float along with each other. And this is very bad because whatever noise voltage that the shield picks up can be capacitively coupled to wire 2, which uh, eliminates the reason for having a shield in the first place uh, as far as capacitive coupling is concerned. Easy thing you can do, and the thing you always want to do, is to ground the shield. So let's go down to this redrawing of the circuit, and there's the shield again. And let's say we have, we know these connections are there, and let's say we ground the shield. This is now what the circuit looks like. Uh, C sub SG has been shorted out. It's got a ground at both sides, so it doesn't matter anymore. Let's just get rid of it. And we know that uh, the capacitive coupling between circuit 1 and S it doesn't really matter because that just feeds through to ground and doesn't affect circuit 2. Circuit 2 on the other side of the capacitance between itself and the shield just sees ground. This is ground over here. This is very steady presumably and so the noise, the fluctuations over here in circuit 1 don't make it to circuit 2. So in practice you should always ground your shields. Always ground your shields. That's the best thing you can do.